U.S.-Mexico border issues have been front and center in the news lately, of course, and so has the treatment of families at the border. We talked last week about President Trump's executive order to end process of separating children from their parents, but reuniting those who had been separated remains an ongoing concern. And this week, local news outlets are highlighting another related issue, two private prison operators who have made significant profits detaining immigrants in their facilities across the nation and in New Mexico, I might add, have also contributed thousands of dollars to state lawmakers and congressional representatives here. And a joint report produced by the New Mexico In-Depth folks and the Santa Fe Reporter highlighted poor conditions at two ICE prisons here in New Mexico. So here to talk about these and other important issues are this week's Line Opinion panelists. Starting with Tom Garrity of the Garrity Group PR. The host of New Mexico People, Places, and Ideas on KUNM 89.9 FM. Steven Spitz is here. Hi, Gene. Hey, good to see you, man. Julianne Grimm, editor of the Santa Fe Reporter, is with us. And our friend Inez Russell Gomez, she's editorial editor for the Santa Fe New Mexican. Inez, uh, let's put it this way. After New Mexico in-depth reported on the contributions uh, given by those private companies, you know, several decided to give the money back. But it sort of it speaks to something, how free-flowing, and maybe, maybe we were just a little too not on top of things with these folks taking this kind of money. This, you know, one might argue could blow up in their faces any minute. What, what, anything we can glean from this idea of giving the money back and or they took it in the first place? What do you, what's your sense of that? I think people running for office will take money from almost anybody that right. gives them money. <laughs> and that's just the reality of the world. And mm -hmm. what we have to remember as reporters and as citizens is that um, mm -hmm. Companies that make money right. by diverting public dollars into their pockets are going to give money to candidates. And it, it's in the United States, putting people in prison is a really lucrative business. I think I read the statistic that we have 5% of the world's population and 25% of the world's prisoners. Right. So we have criminalized a whole lot of things that don't need to right. be crimes, and now we're locking people up. Mm -hmm. The public dollar couldn't keep up with that, so private companies said, wow, I'm going to open a prison and I'll make lots of money. That's right. And they're That's giving right. money to these candidates to make sure they keep getting to run these prisons. That's right. So as reporters, our job is to make sure that conditions aren't inhumane mm -hmm. and that's what stories like this are so important mm -hmm. and one of the problems with private prisons is they don't have the same reporting and disclosure rules that public prisons right. do right so in this country we're going to have to decide if we want to lock people up or if we want to take care of them mm -hmm. and where we want to spend our money mm -hmm. and that's i think a huge debate for the next election isn't that something julianne i want to jump to you with santa fe reporter interesting piece about what our our representative mo maestas is up to he wants to have a hearing uh, with a committee here in uh, made up of uh, legislators and others in our body uh, it's a very interesting uh, idea in the middle of July to do this and hear from some people that have been detained and hear the details of it. Give us a sense of that in your reporting on this. The other thing mm -hmm. that's interesting about that hearing that is uh, unusual mm -hmm. is that um, Momaestas has invited um, representatives from ICE, ah. representatives from the two uh, private prison operators, as well as prison advocates people who have spent time or people whose families have spent time inside. And so the opportunity for there to be a lot of information and robust discussion is there. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, those private prison officials and those ICE officials are not obligated to show up. And there's really, I think, going to be no um, certainty about whether they testify and what they say until the day arrives. Interesting. They're also going to have public testimony. Yes. Uh, an hour, I think they should probably triple that when you really think about it. Maybe I'll think about that as it gets closer, but what would you expect in that public testimony uh, to un reveal, possibly? I mean, I think there'll be a bit of jockeying between mm. the various advocacy groups who will bring droves of people in their various color-coordinated <laughs> T-shirts. <Right. laughs> um, you know, but the idea behind that is there are a large number of residents who are concerned about this issue. Yes. Um, whether those residents are people who have permission from the federal government to work in this country or people who were born and raised here, um, mm -hmm. I think you're going to hear from a lot of people who have concerns about um, really private prisons are an abdication of a basic social responsibility. And the idea that we're going to correct or rehabilitate people mm -hmm. um, has really gone out the window when you have somebody who's essentially operating a hotel. Right. If you're paid in a bad hotel, right. you know, if you're paid to to have someone each night, what is your incentive to let them leave? Right. That's right. Especially as Inez pointed out, when you're making some pretty good jingle mm -hmm. off each one of those people, you know, the, the incentive just dives. What, what's your sense of this? Again, it's a fast moving thing, but we are, if you think about 
what could possibly happen for us in New Mexico. We could be very close to this whole situation with detainees. Mm -hmm. You know, we have folks here, you know, in our state now, but it could grow, actually, if they want to keep us in a area of just this part of the country. Where could we be headed on this for New Mexico? Oh, I, we're, we're right in the middle of all yeah. of it, no doubt. And I, you know, I think that the hearing, I think, would be good. I think, uh, unfortunately, it would probably be more therapeutic because the decision-making outside of uh, any state-led investigation or accountability of the federal operations would really have no uh, bearing whatsoever. But mm -hmm. I think it's needed because a lot of folks want to know what's happening in, in those uh, makeshift uh, detain, uh, detention right. facilities. Um, on, on the other topic that Inez touched on mm -hmm. with regards to uh, the donate, you know, the do donations that are received. Right. What really is fascinating is a new kind of twist to all of this where the elected official, instead of returning the dollar, is donated to a nonprofit right. or an amount of an equivalent uh, figure. And I think I have an issue with this okay. because what, what they're doing is that they're telling the organization that's giving them the money is, you know what? Um, I really like the fact that you support me, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and give this money to Big Brothers Big Sisters right. or whatever it is, uh, and and that way I'll be clean from right. it as a result. That's right. Of it. That's right. And they're really not clean. That's I mean, right. if they don't want the money, they should just return the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to find something else to do with it, but you're not encouraging that behavior. Of, mm -hmm. You know what? I'm really taking the high road. When in actuality, mm, you're really not. That's right, that's right. Good point there. You know, Steve, when you start to look at the numbers, uh, Inez made mention of this earlier, uh, Management and Training Corporation, one of the MCI, one of the uh, uh, groups that is detaining these folks, they're charging $70, $70 uh, per day, uh, sorry, $80 per day for a detainee, ringing up between 8.9 and 2.1 million monthly. Monthly, two million round, you know, as an average, that's an amazing amount of money. But we don't have any oversight of this, do we? Uh, we we've got we've got smuggled cell phone camera ver footage, but that's about it so far. So we're not sure what we're getting for our money on this, do we? We don't know the treatment, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's mm -hmm. huge money involved. I think uh, Cor Core Civic, which is one of the private prison operators, right, was. Um, dismissed by the federal government in 2016. That's right. Because they had three inmate deaths. Within three months, they had repurposed the facility as an immigrant detention facility. Wow. They then got Cibola County to contract with ICE. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were, and this contract, they are a subcontractor of Cibola County. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get $1.5 million a month, whether they have any detainees or not, wow. and then extra if they have more detainees. Huh. So lots of money involved, and so you wonder, so why are these private prison operators and why are these private detention facilities giving these contributions? Mm -hmm. Well, New Mexico has 40% of our state inmates are in private prisons, mm -hmm. 40%. That's far higher than any other state. The state, the average in other states is 8%. Wow. You know, and the other thing that struck me about uh, the contributions was some of it was such small change to yes. our legislature. Yes. Yes. There's $300 yes. here, $500 there. Yep. The governor got $130,000. Was Rudy Martinez, the Republican uh, 250, governor. Right, and exactly. all this money is mm -hmm. being paid to say, don't look, right. keep your hands off. That's so right. that's the best thing for a governor or for a legislator. Oh, you know, right. $130,000 not to do anything. That's right. But I, I, I would just, Tom made, I think, a really good point I want to add to Please. it. So, um, you know, what can be done at the hearing? That, that's the issue you raised. California has actually done something. It's, it has given the California Attorney General authority to investigate private prison operators and private detention operators. Mm -hmm. So it, the legislature could pass that statute. Right. And that would be a good thing, because then we would start mm -hmm. to find out more about the conditions with, which Ina has talked right. about. I mean, supposedly these inmates are kept under frigid conditions. They're not given adequate me medical care. I mean, but these are all reports, you know, sure. individual reports, anecdotal reports. Sure. And so what we really need is, is more light being shined on this problem. But isn't it a fact, Inez, that uh, um, Representative Maestas makes this point, we could do that now. Yes. Right now, because it's under the state purview of, of whatever happens in these places. You yes, know? I, I think that one of the things mm -hmm. that is gonna play out if, if uh, President Trump continues this kind of harsh border treatment 
is that border states that aren't necessarily under Republican control, whether they have a Democratic attorney general as we do, right. or California, which has Democratic leadership up and down, are going to say we're going to investigate. Right. I mean, I don't know why you couldn't get a subpoena and just take law enforcement in to Thank go you. look. You know, exactly. there's no reason to allow mistreatment in mm -hmm. our own state. Mm -hmm. Now, the New Mexican a few years ago uh, did a bunch of stories on medical care in private prisons, finding out that it was inadequate, that people right. were hurt, they were dying. Right. So it's not just in centers that are treating immigrants, it's in centers that are treating prisoners that are from our state, that are our neighbors and people we know probably. That's right. Because not everyone that goes to prison is this horrible, awful criminal. That's right. Because we've criminalized so many things. Mm -hmm. Interesting, we have to move it. I love that point, uh, Inez. And Tom, when you think about it, Detain detainees, whether children or whatever, are being moved all over the country. Someone has to move these people across the country, so there's money being made there. And we have our own version here in New Mexico with CSI av Aviation and the reporting a few years ago that uh, by Alan Way, he's the owner, he was a former uh, uh, Republican Senate candidate, didn't win, but he runs this company. He flies detainees back to Mexico. I wonder how much money he's going to be making after, after this is all said and done. Do you know what I mean? Because someone's yeah. going to fly these folks back well, once the hearings start. And if my understanding is, and I, I'm not as intimately familiar with the situation as those who have covered it from the journalism side, but right. my understanding is, is that when he b it got the business, it was not to, you know, for detainee traffic. I mean, they were, you know, CSI is very good at moving uh, military personnel, That's right. uh, you know, from point A to point B. Right. And I think what they did, what happened was that the U.S. government did a, sh uh, they sh shifted the scope of work okay. and stuff. So That's I don't, enough. I don't sure. think that they willingly went into this. Right. I don't think anybody willingly goes into it. It's a horrible situation. Right. Uh, right. But, you know, I, I think that that's what their contract originally was, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they had a shift change. Mm -hmm. But it makes the point, it's a lot of money flying around yeah. Oh, yeah, for a absolutely. lot of different people and around here. It's interesting. you can turn the yeah. money down and say, I don't want to move small children away from their parents, and right. I'm not going to do that for money. That's Could right. Could you imagine, right. Well, the airlines are doing that. Yeah. Two airlines right. have yes. done that. Uh, three, actually. Yeah. Yeah. What if your first yeah. time on an airplane as a child oh. was being moved from one prison to another and not knowing where your parents are? Right. Or where right. you're going? That's right. That's right. And we have a word now that uh, there may not be reunifications for some of these kids. You so know, one so interesting thing happens. is a habeas mm -hmm. corpus suit was filed, I think, just recently. Mm -hmm. And it's brought, it, it is alleging wrongdoing at these detention facilities. Right. And so I think we're going to get a look in, you know, in that habeas corpus proceeding, mm -hmm. at least at, at what's going on in that has to start. One, yeah. one facility. That's right. That's the but start. We really need what I know, what I know said. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Now, when we come back to the line, we'll look at Santa Fe's most recent and not very favorable audit report.